Welcome back, what's going on? Today we are doing another room from Toy Hack Me. The room is Linux Privilege Escalation and honestly this room is a great. It contains around 21 tasks where you will go over all, nearly, nearly, all, all over the techniques used to escalate privilege, privileges in Linux operating system. So basically in this video we're going over task 2, 3, 4 and 5. We're going to demonstrate the techniques and answer the questions. So let's get started and move over to my virtual machine. So let's take this on the right. So type yes and paste in the password. So we're logged in now. Let's see who we are, typing ID, and we are the user, user, user. So uh, as you can see, we are part of the group user and um, these are the information about the user so basically let's start off with the first method to escalate your privileges in Linux the first one is exploiting services so one of the ways is we list out the current processes running and see if we have got processes where the owner of the process is root so let's run the command Let's go over the processes. So we, we got several processes running under root, but not to, not, notably we got one that we can exploit, which is the uh, MySQL. So once MySQL is running under the root user, as you can see here, we can apply a popular exploit to create shared object and also shared library. Uh, and we can use the logging credentials, if we have them, to log into MySQL and demonstrate the exploitation process. So the exploit, you can find it here in MySQL version 4x5 user defined function dynamic library exploitation. The steps are outlined here but we're gonna uh, demonstrate them practically live on the machine. Alright, let's go back and start. So the first thing we have to go to the home directory cd user, cd or ls, cd tools. So all of the available, all of the necessary exploits are downloaded for you here. You can, you only have to cd to the path. So cd mysql. So in here you will find a C file. The C file is the exploit code or contains the exploit code. So we have to compile this file first so we can compile it using gcc dash g dash c raptor and then dash f yeah i see just follow the instructions from the exploit page so as, as you can see we have now the output file and the next thing if we go back to the page we have to create the shared object file using this command so we can copy it directly Based. Okay, ls. As you can see, we have the shared object file. The shared object file is very necessary for the exploitation process. After you have created the shared object file, you will have to log in to the MySQL server. So MySQL MySQL u root. Now, as you can see, we have been logged in without the need to provide the password. So another problem or another uh, condition to exploit or to perform this exploit is that the root user shouldn't have the password shouldn't have a password to log in into the MySQL. If there was a password to log into MySQL, then you have to guess the password before logging in. So once you are logged into the MySQL, now you go over the exploitation process. So basically, first we use the MySQL database, and then we create table. So here we create a table called foo. Now after that, we perform this command. Technically in this command, we are loading a file or creating you know, a file. So basically we can do that. And since the MySQL is running under root, 
there will be no problem in writing files. So MySQL now will be able to insert values and use the shared object file that we have created earlier here. Next, we select everything from the table we have just created and dump all of the values into the shared object file. That syntax, yes, we forgot the S. Okay. Last step is we could use the function to perform some system commands. The first one, so create function, do system, returns, integer, so name, raptor, UDF. That's the first one. And lastly, we will use the do system again, all right, or use the function one more time to copy the bin bash into a file we create under the temp directory. This file will execute bin bash and will give it permissions all done within MySQL. That's the beauty of UDF exploits. All right, now we are done with the MySQL. Let's exit and head directly to the temp directory. We will see our file created here. So once executing the file, we will be able to obtain shell or another shell. This time will be root shell. RM uh, name execute first the shell. So as you can see now we are the root user. ID and right now we are who am I? Yeah, but the yeah as although it's showing user. But, we're st but actually we are root, or we changed the root. But for some reason, I can't see it here. All right, so that is the first way to escalate the privileges. Uh, let me try with another way. So if we execute this now, or let's see, su user. Password, three to one, okay. Um, let's do now root ls dash p id yeah now it worked as you can see we are part of the, the gid has changed to zero which means we are the root user now all right so now let's exit and demonstrate another way to get um, reverse shell. Uh, sorry, the privilege escalation. So basically, sue back to user password123. Clear. All right. The next step is to examine if the etc shadow file has re uh, or is readable by another user so ls dash la etc grip shadow so if you look at the shadow file as you can see it is readable by the group shadow so if we try to read the file by saying cat etc shadow we will be able to see the content of the file and each line uh, as you can see in the file each line represents a user so for example, the user here is user and the password hash can be found between the first and the second column. So the first one is here, the second one is here. Uh, the first one is here and here is the second one. So which means that this one is the hash or the password hash of the user. Likewise, with the root user, we start at the first column and end with the second column this one or this is the password hash for the root user so what we can do now we can just copy that and use our machine or your machine say uh, cd desktop try hack me nano hash Uh, what file p 
paste the hash. Use now join the ripper. So here I'm going to use the file hash. Let's see now. So the password has been found and it is password123. Let's try now to log into the root user. So root password is password123. And now we're logged in as a root user. ID root. That is the second way of escalating the privileges. Let's see now the questions we have to answer. What is the root user's password hash? So we've seen that the password hash is oh, let's cat it from here. Cat cat five. What hashing algorithm was used to produce the root user's password hash? What hashing algorithm was used to produce the root user's password hash? So we can use hash identifier to identify the type of hash. SHA256. Oh. John the Ripper should automatically identify it when cracking. Let's see John the Ripper. What is the root user's password? So we found the password to be password123. I wish that all the passwords be the same as this. All right, weak file permissions, writable etc shadow. All right, let's step back now to the user account. So user, clear. So the next way or the next method is to look if the etc shadow file can be writable. Okay, so, so that when it is readable by the regular user, we can grab the hash and crack it. But what if the etc shadow file is writable? So it will be more easier to ch make changes on the file rather than just copy the hashes and waste your time cracking the hash. So we can do that saying lsa ls dash ls dash la etc grep shadow. We see also it's writable by everyone. So we can now create a hash, all right, a password and paste it in the etc shadow file. Let's generate a new password, make password dash m, define the algorithm SHA 512, and then we type your new password. Let's say password 1111. This is the hash for your password. We can now nano the EDC shadow and change the root user password. Make sure to put the hash in the right place just before the second column. So start from here. And paste your password. Change. Save changes. Now you can sue to the root user with your new password, which is password 111. And now we're locked in. Right. So that is the third way. So we exploited the services running under the root user. We also exploited the fact that the shadow file was readable by everyone and also writable by everyone. Now we will examine the password file or etc password file ls la etc grip fast wd. So let's take a look. This is the password file. As you can see, it is readable and writable by everyone. So you can create a password and just the same way you did with the shadow file, you will do it with the password file. So let's use open. SSL 
passwd and say password 112 and here you have the root account replace x with the password and login oh actually we are the root account let me suit the user now let's switch to the root account to root type the new password we have created earlier password 112 and we're logged in all right let's see the questions so run the id command as the new root user what is the result run the id and just copy these the result is you are the root user that's the result so we have explored four ways or actually one two three four four ways to escalate the privileges in linux operating system i hope you find that enjoyable and in the next videos we will go over the rest of the techniques to cover them in depth and um, hopefully you will find them helpful so thank you for watching